Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. We have the patch notes available for update 1.83, which will be the new season coming on the 2nd of November. Obviously we know we're getting a new map and we're getting Ash. Um, so with arenas there is map rotation. With the introduction of Encore, the arena's map rotation now includes only custom made arena maps. So it won't be Battle Royale based maps that we've had in the past, uh, which is kind of a shame. It's quite nice being places that you, you know. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. We know we've got our new weapon, the CAR SMG. Um, again, this takes light and heavy ammo, which is really cool. With ranked, they have now fixed the skydive trails that some people were still being able to access from seasons one and two. Well, sort of two and three, but you know what I mean, like the original couple of uh, ranked seasons. Um, and then the other changes include the kill RP values will now take difference between the killer and victim ranked tiers into account. And the kill RP cap um, is being raised from six to seven. However, the kill related RP cap can be reached in different ways depending on the tier differences and placement. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, so they're changing that. Um, victims do not lose more or less points when killed. Only the killer receives the modifier. This isn't making a lot of sense to me. I hope it makes some sense to you because they've just changed how the points work. Um, an Apex, Predator and Masters are treated as the same tier um, in the in the points uh, system. Ranked Arenas is also having some changes, so they now have two splits. They said they weren't going to put any splits in, so I'm kind of annoyed that they've gone back on themselves. Um, and then with each new season or split, you know when you first started you had to play a few games. They're bringing that back, so you then have to play 10 matches for a new season or 5 for a split. So that's fun. Um, improvements have been made in matchmaking for finding similarly skilled teammates. I guess that's just down to more people playing, really. We now have the buffs and nerfs for Legends. Watson is the first one on the list. Um, improve the reliability and responsiveness of placing Watson's tactical and ultimate. Watson can place her tactical and ultimate objects on valid surfaces above Watson's eye level. That's interesting. General hitbox size increase to compensate for the removal of low profile legends. Um, so her tactical Increased damage on crossing a fence by 33% from 15 to 20. Increase the debuff duration of crossing the fence from 1.5 to 3 seconds. Increase the time allowance to be hit again by a fence from 0.5 to 1 second. Increase placement range by 50%. Decrease the delay between fences shutting off and reenacting after an ally passes through them from 1 second to 0 0.4. Watson now moves at unarmed speed while readying or placing fences. That's good, that's a good one. Um, fence nodes can now be placed as soon as the weapon is readied instead of waiting for the animation to finish her ultimate the pylon output um, has been reworked so reduce the number of active pylons watson can place from three to one uh, the pylon now lasts forever instead of timing out after 90 seconds as it used to be i believe um, the pylon now has a pool of 250 shields that can be distributed to nearby players instead of infinite shields. Okay, so it's like the recharge. It can only recharge 250 rather than just keep recharging people. I guess that makes sense if you've got infinite pylons though. Um, increase the pylon shield recharge rate by 150%. 
Um, so instead of two seconds to five seconds, it will be more like one and a half seconds to one to zero point two. If that makes sense. Um, when a pylon is out of shields, it no longer recharges players, um, but can still zap incoming ordnance. I kind of assume that. Um, taking damage while regenerating shields via the pylon delays continued regeneration by one second. The UI on the ground and the HUD elements now display uh, the amount of shields that are remaining. That's interesting. That's good. That would be good to know. Um, pinging a friendly pylon will now display the percentage of shields left on it. Uh, pylon ordnance zapping has been moderately reworked. I assume this is down to half the time it not working with certain legends, um, so that's good. Ordnance is now zapped when the pylon detects that it would hit any surface within its range and line of sight. Um, as part of the changes, current issues where the pylon doesn't reliably zap ordnance um, and it bounces off the surface should now be addressed from these changes. Um, and then we've got some balance changes for weapons, the supply drop rotation. So this season the triple tape returns to the floor loot, um, taking its place will be the G7 scout, um, and the scout will have the double tap trigger. I love and miss the double tap. It's so good on a G7 and an EVA. I mean it's a bit deadly with an EVA, EVA but the G7 it, it works really well with, so I'm glad that's back. Pop-up swaps, we've got a dual shell. Each round loaded into the Mastiff or the 3030 repeater is doubled. Fully kitted rotation. Um, so the Mastiff, 3030, 301, the car, the new gun, and the longbow will all be in the rotation for the fully kitted weapons. Obviously taking out the Peacekeeper, Rampage, 45 flatline, and charge rifle. The EVA 8, the fire rate, is reduced from 2.1 to 2. Don't know how much that's going to change, but we'll, we'll see in game. The Peacekeeper slightly increased the pellet size and choke up time reduced from 1.5 to 1.25 seconds. Uh, choke up shots remain tight for slightly longer when exiting the ADS. The longbow, the damage is reduced from 60 to 55. Uh, the L star reduced the barrel effectiveness at all rarity tiers. Uh, significantly reduced projectile collision size. And the damage is reduced from 18 to 17. The G7, the damage is increased from 34 to 36. And as I said, the double tap is added when it's in. Um, the care packages. The supply drop weapon rates. Um, early game will be increased from 25 to 50, mid game from 50 to 75 and late game from 75 to 100. It's good that they've increased everything because half the time, like right at the end of the game, you just end up with med kits and shields that aren't even useful at that point. Um, so that's good. Hot zone gold loot rates increase the amount of gold loot that spawns in hot zones. Crafting has been increased, so instead of making 20 ammo, you'll get 60. Or with shotguns, um, shotgun ammo, it'll be 8 to 24. And arrows, 16 to 48. And the sniper goes up from 12 to 36. So you basically get a whole pack rather than a third of a pack or half a pack depending on the um, ammo P uh, the crafting ammo price will be increased from 5 to 10 per weapon or per type um, so basically it will be 20 to craft um, ammo instead the evo armor increase charge uh, from 45 to 50 if that makes any sense um, the price has been increased as well um, enemy NPC updates so the prowler health 
across the game has gone from 90 to 114 on Storm Point and World's Edge, and the Prowlers on World's Edge and the Flyers on Kings Canyon now reward Evo points, um, 25% all damage done. That's good, at least you get something for shooting them now. Although be careful when you are, because obviously everyone can hear you doing it. Uh, arenas, the supply drop, round one, um, three times blue, one times purple, and then two extra blue. Um, I don't know if this is important in any way. The weapon prices have changed as well in arenas. Um, where are we? Mozambique has gone up 25 for the blue and by 50 for purple. P2020 has gone down um, from 75 on blue to 50 and purple is 150 to 125. The RE45 has also gone down by 50 on each level. Um, we've got the Prowler that's base level from 500 to 400. Blue is 300 to 350, so that one's gone up, and the purple has gone down from 400 to 350. Um, the 99 base level 500 to 450. Blue is 250 to 300, and the purple is 300 to 350. Last week we've got the hemlock on here as well, so the base level has gone down from 500 to 450. Quality of life changes, we've got UI uh, teammates will now show that they are self-reviving on their in-world game tags. Uh, okay. Added a voice over for players to communicate when they are out of ammo, that's useful. Um, Updated the arena map rotation images to show up to five maps. Updated social awareness badges to unlock as default for all accounts. Um, yeah, that's fair enough. I don't know why it wasn't doing that already. Um, obviously, you may know that they got taken down until this most recent update. This will be why. We have some other bug fixes. So Steam only fixed an issue where your online friends playing Apex didn't count towards total online friends while in matches. I don't know if that really matters, but whatever. Um, fixed a bug for placing a caustic trap over a seer ultimate. This could result in the ultimate being protected from taking damage. I didn't know that. That would have been so cool to know. Um, updated the vault skin charm placement to be moved up so the charms become more visible. Okay. Uh, fixed a bug with players losing extra boosted loader extra ammo uh, if the player reloaded before getting to base ammo amount. Steam uh, fixed issue where if a player has forward slash in their name a backslash uh, will be added right before it automatically. I mean that's not really that exciting. Um, Fix issue where players do not see legend select when starting a game in trios and immediately advance to dropship phase. I mean, I just assumed that was the servers crashing. Um, audio fix for cases where music starts playing in the middle of a battle royale match. Fixed an error that showed that the legendary prowler had a shotgun tag in the in-game info screen. Audio fix for cases where voiceover for map changes doubles up, playing both variants at the same time. I've had that quite a lot recently. Uh, audio fix for Rampart Town Takeover where vending machines had no sound. Fixed a bug where non crossplay Steam friends playing Apex would show up with debug text. Removed the random rock floating in midair in World's Edge. Again, I didn't know that was a thing. Bug fix for cases where a player could stand up and jump in a knocked out position. That's funny, I liked that. Um, fixed a bug where players' names would be missing from Legend Select. Reduced hitbox size for crafting material canisters to better fit its shape. 
Rampart 6 for cases where Rampart No Mercy finisher causes her to clip through geometry. Uh, fix issue where, where Watson's ultimate doesn't always destroy grenades. Um, we kind of covered that. Pathfinder fix an issue with players being able to create zip lines much further than intended. Fuse fixed a bug for his ultimate cooldown being the same with or without a gold helmet. And Seer removed ability for players to be able to bunny hop at full speed while using a passive. Well, that is everything on the system for you. Um, as always, guys, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.